How's that? We got sound now. Uh, that's echoey. Hold on. One two, one two, one two, one two, one two, one two. As that, have we got sound now? Hold on. Okay, I've got a bit of reverb in here. Um, which I'll have to sort out. Okay. Um, I've put in a new switching unit. The mic that used to work with the old switching unit's not working so well. It's causing some problems. So I've had to put in another mic. Uh, the other mic's in. And I never connected it. Turned it on. So it's on. Echo is. Yeah, I can hear that echo. Hold on. Uh, let's try Just got to jiggle the controls a little bit. Hold on, let's see if we can sort this out. Right, let's come back here. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. One, two. How's that? Is that a bit better? I can still hear an echo. Hold on. How's that? No, still there, isn't it? Hold on. Uh, oh, where is the light? Oh, yeah. So I'll turn this back a bit more. 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 One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. Right. You've still got the echo, haven't you? If I shout, echo. Talk quietly, no echo. Well, no, there is a bit of echo. Uh, but we might have to put up with a bit of an echo, I'm afraid. Or I'll sort these mics out. Hopefully it doesn't crack too much. So back to where we were. So what you did in there. Uh, the demo. I don't like that sound at all. The demo is slightly different. Because it's a project that I've got to do. I don't normally. Uh, take on a lot of work. Work comes in. And I feed it over to Tom. The guy that taught me to turn. Because he's got the time to do it. And I haven't. But. Uh, someone wanted a couple of big chair legs made for a table. Yeah, it's still very quiet. If I turn it up, it echoes. Hold on, let me just try.
Right, have we got sound now? If someone could do something and let me know. I know I'm a few seconds behind you, so. Now I've turned, got rid of the speaker. Got another mic connected up turn the other mic off so there is a feedback screech so I'm running 20 seconds behind you at the moment so if someone could let me know if that's okay now yes better okay okay right I'm assuming I'm seeing okay's so we're better morning everybody that's turned up uh, we've had a few technical issues with microphones, so let's start from the beginning. Okay, what I was saying earlier. So, I get jobs sent in to me as a turner, or I get people phoning up for work, and I normally pass this over to uh, Tom, the guy that taught me to turn, because running the shop and... Uh, cutting blanks for the orders that go out and all this sort of stuff takes time and to commit to turning for people means I've got to find more time and some of the projects I get sent in uh, I had a guy the other day that wanted 450 little plugs done, 8 mil plugs um, oh, it would be a nice little job to do really be quite quick I should imagine but I'm not very quick as a production turner because I don't do it. Uh, and Tom's got plenty of time, so I'll pass the work on to him. But I've got two big chair table legs to make. Um, now, I've not passed these on to Tom because these are big pieces of oak. They weigh just shy of 50 kilos. Uh, and so I was, it, this all started about a year ago. And... The job's come to the front and the guy wants it done. So I said, OK, I'll do it. Well, he suddenly sprung it on me last week. He needs them for next week. And he had a year. So thanks, Fletch. Um, so I've got to do them this weekend. I've got no choice. I had no time during the week. So part of the demo is, or the demo is turning these legs. Um... I don't know how long it's going to take. I haven't got a clue. We, I messed around last night working a way to mount them. Um, now, production turners, Steve Jones and uh, Les Fawn and people like that, they're geared for this sort of work. Their lathes are big and heavy and they'll take big, heavy pieces of wood. They've got massive long beds, etc., etc. Many production turners will have the equipment to do the job. I've got an FU-230, a Stratus FU-230, or I've got an Axminster 1628, or I've got a VB bowl turning lathe. So, my VB is a MIDI, and if this is not working out too well, I'm going to have to cancel the demo uh, and go on to um, a VB, but I think this will work. It will certainly put the uh, Stratos 230 under test, that's for certain. Um, I've put big heavy pieces of wood on the little 1628 in the past and it's worked fine, so I think the Stratos will work. So what I've done is I've uh, worked out a pattern for me to do it. I'm not saying this is the right way to do it because... I don't do this sort of work and this is the first time I've ever turned big table legs. Now, the spec for the table legs I've got is the bulbous bit has got to be 500 mil and around about 260 mil in diameter. That's it. Oh, and I've got a picture. Here we go. Show you the picture. The legs can be similar to something like this that you can see here. So, you know, I've got a visual, something like that, similar. 
open spec. So the first one should be relatively, uh, well not relatively, fairly simple uh, once we get going. But uh, the second one has obviously got to marry the first one. So I don't know if the second one's going to get done today or if I'll do it tomorrow. And depending on how it goes, I'll just turn the cameras back on. So just feel free, just flit in and out if you want to. Uh, it might be a long project, so, you know, I'm not saying, oh, hour and a half stream. So that explains that. Now, if we come over to the overhead camera, this is the end of the piece of wood. I've got one flat end, it seems, on the couple of pieces of wood I've got, and one funny end. So I've marked a ring out to me uh, nine inches, 260 mil, whatever it might be, to give me a guide. Uh, and I've marked a center, as near as I can get it, and I've screwed this on a face plate. Okay, so what I've now got to do is get it on the lathe without damaging the spindle, which is a bit of lifting. I'm putting gloves on purely because when I was lifting it on and off yesterday, it slipped and caught me little finger. So lesson learned, don't do that. So I've got a couple of blocks of wood something like that so I can lift it onto the wood to get it roughly to spindle white and then I've got some tape of wood that I can push underneath it to just jack it up a little bit where we need to I'm going to get rid of that tool rest out of my way for a minute now I've done my best with the cameras they're quite close to the lathe so you get detail but for this I've had to spread them out a bit and zoom them back a bit so that you can see the piece of wood on the lathe. So firstly, we've got to lift this up, get a weight training, and then it will lay on there somehow. Okay. So that looks somewhere near it. Now I've got to get it up to the spindle somewhere there so I had it on be careful of me blocks there and now I've got to get the spindle to take which it's taken there and that's where me wedges come in you've just got to take a little bit of pressure off the spindle so I'm true The bit of wedge has just fallen on the floor. I don't want to damage the spindle, so back in, back here, get the wedge in there. That's too high. Wedge back a bit, so we'll get it parallel. Woods for a while on the floor, which I didn't want to happen. <coughs> Straight away, you can see the problems with dealing with pieces of wood like this is they're bulky, and I've got to get this fairly true. My wedge has disappeared where I don't want it to, most awkward place in the world.
you can see it's a bit of a struggle. And that wedge has gone again. I've got to get this back end jacked up a bit. Be a short demo if I can't get this on the lathe, wouldn't it? To lift 50 kilos with one arm is not happening. Might be a bit high there. Right, it's gonna go, then it stops. This is a struggle. I got it on there yesterday and I thought, oh, this works. Might have been just lucky. Just got to get the thing to buy it.
having it here. That must have been a lucky break yesterday, I think. Where you stop and go for a cup of tea, innit? Give up, go and get a cup of tea. They're quite a coarse thread, so once it picks, it will go, but you just gotta get it just right, obviously. Baby, you can do it. I should have left it mounted yesterday, shouldn't I? where you need Joe to get up in the mornings. <laughs> Had it all on here yesterday and I took it off thinking it wouldn't be so much of a problem this morning. And it is. Proving to be a little pig. falling on the floor is a wind up this could be a morning's demo on how to get the wood on the lathe Yeah. 
which comes out. A real lucky break yesterday. Easy if you just put it between centers with a couple of steps, wouldn't it? I'm a bit a little bit high now. Maybe I was on this flat face yesterday rather than the other one. not to mount a piece of wood. Right. Yeah, they don't want that dropping on the floor. Don't go boo bang. Alright, if it falls my way, I suppose. I don't want it falling the other way because of the cameras. Looks better. <laughs> ah, I was on that face yesterday. So problem one, I was on the wrong face. I think I need a drink. Um, so we're on the face plate. We're up to the shoulder here. We'll tighten that off with a spanner. So this end, again, we've got to have a bit of support. And uh, I thought, well, I can't just use a step there. So what I bought some time ago was a, this is an Axminster Live Centre. But you can take the point off it. It's got a screw face so you can fit a chuck to it. So... I fitted a chuck to it and a face plate. So I can come in with this, got the tail stock off, wind this in so it gets, and I'm just going to bring the face plate up to this taper bit there. And I've got a gap. So what I'll need to do is cut a little wedge in there. So I hold the face plate because the face plate is true, the wood isn't. So I need a couple of little wedges. to take out the gap at the back. It's not too far out, it's 
bit loose there. That one might be a bit better in there. But that's that. Let's take that down a little bit. Okay, and now what I try and do is get some screws into here. Now I'm not messing around, these are like big heavy screws because this is a big heavy piece of wood. The screws into here to hold her. Right, she'll be old in some sort of fashion. We'll pull that piece of wood out of there. Get that piece of wood out of there and we are mounted so now we'll get a couple more screws into this face plate Right, that seems to be held. So, now what we want to do, make sure she's locked down, she's locked down, she's locked down. And make sure that's done up. Now we've got a little grub screw on here to stop it undoing. So what I'm going to do is do those up as well. No, wrong key. That's that one. On that side. There. Okay. We're locked. Now we've got to see if the tool rest, which it won't, fit under this wood. The wood was cut, uh, and ideally, what it could have done, is done with chopping a bit more off. But my accuracy with chainsaw might have put a taper on it, and then we wouldn't have got our three inches out of it. So, what we're going to have to do is work our way along till we can get it round. So I've got to make sure the speed is down, turn the lathe on, find me tool rest that I took off my lathe. Turn it over, somewhere there, uh, back a little bit there. 
we'll start at one end chipping away so that goes all right there so make sure this is all locked down and we'll turn it on and the and all will turn it on just advancing the speed really slowly this won't take a lot to go out of sync Takes a long while to stop. To lock all this down, the headstock looked like it was moving. I went bang here, made me jump. Right, I've locked the head stock down. There was a bit of prep there, so that was moving. We're back there. Stop that. Right, so what's happening now? I've got too much queer out of here. So I've got the extension bed on the lathe and that is moving slightly so I can't afford that to happen. So let's make sure that's locked down and I've got the extension leg on it. So I'm going to have to get that tightened down. make this as rigid as I can. I can't afford for it to move around because with the weight of the wood it could obviously fracture the steel. We don't want that. And if I found the right spanner first time to lock everything down. So, I'm just trying to lock down the supporting leg for the extension bed to stop the bed from moving, but of course the spanner I want is not to land. Typical. So the problems of turning something big. Now Oh, 
whole plethora of spanners now. It's got to be one of them. Not that one. Not that one. What's that taking us? 45 minutes to get it set up. So we turn that on now. And we got no, there's a little bit of movement on the end here. Nothing much, uh, I'll tell you nothing much, there is a bit. Just a little bit of movement. I can't really see what I can do to stop that. It's out of kilter, so everything's locked down there. It'd be ideal if the headstock was on the lathe body itself. So these are the problems we face when we do something like this. Take on jobs that we shouldn't. Trying to get this as close now to the extension joint as possible with the least amount of quill I've got hanging out. Now let's try that. There's still just a little bit of movement in there, but. Not a lot, okay. So we're actually ready to start turning. Michael, no, it's not gonna be a two or three part demonstration. This job's got to be done this weekend, so I'm just gonna carry on with it. Uh, you watch as much or as little of it as you like. Best idea, you'll be able to go shopping, come back and see if it's done. Now, that's a simple answer. Okay. Okay, so, oh, cup of coffee, I'm gonna need this today. Is everybody happy at the moment? <laughs> to me, old intro here. Everybody happy at the moment? Everybody with it? Have we got any questions so far? This is really just to show what can happen when you start doing jobs like this. If you're on a big uh, wokin, one piece wokin, or uh, a one way solid long bed, 50 kilo chunk of wood is nothing. Right, so, cut the sips of coffee. Turn the lathe on. Now I've just got my spindle roughing gouge. I'll put me safety specs on. This is going to be a tedious, put me safety specs on the right way up. A tedious start to get this to round. But I'm just going to bring my tool rest in. For some reason I've got my tool rest at totally the wrong height. I'm going to be a bit lower. Somewhere there. Make sure I 
there. So we've got to chip away at it so that we can move the tool rest along. do straight away is change from this spindle roughing gouge and get into a heavy duty bowl gouge. Why you say? Because an heavy duty bowl gouge is your strongest tool and the way that's clunking there I've got to be able to get this to round a bit. Once we get around and in balance, then we will be able to get a bit of speed into it. Tom's firmly locked into my side and the only reason I'm stopping it now is if I chipped off enough so I can get the tool rest along just a tad further. Then I can work on more area. I'm going to talk rest along a little bit further again. Someone trying to phone me. Uh, hello? Oh, I haven't changed over the camera, have I? Hold on. How's that? That's better. <laughs> All right, Dunk. Yeah. Okay, lovely. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Sorry, people. I'm more concentrating on trying to get this bit of wood turned. Forgot all about the cameras. Even with a new switching unit, you still got to do it yourself. Um, I haven't got Karen with me this morning. If Karen was here, she would have been looking at the iPad saying, you haven't turned the camera. Uh, so, and of course, with YouTube, Unless I look up at the YouTube screen, I can't see your comments. So, what I've been doing, if you've stayed with me and not got bored and cleared off, is I'm chipping away at the corners here to take the diameter down enough to move the tool rest along a bit so I can get a bit more at it. Um, obviously, I've got a big void here, but I've got a big void because it's... 
I've done that. <laughs> right, camera's changed. Sorry, everybody. Wouldn't it be nice if you could have YouTube talk to you? Mike Wall has uh, Mark and Pete there talking to him so he can do that. Uh, and then they're in on, and they're in the museum saying, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. You said you didn't need me for that. Normally, what would happen here is Karen's sitting down with an iPad watching, and that's why she does it. She doesn't do it because she loves wood turning, to the, or loves me to the end of the earth. Probably does, I can understand that. But she will turn around, because we're 20 seconds delay, and say, camera, and I'll go, oh, and I hit the button. But when you're doing something like this, she don't want to sit here for the day. I don't blame her. Um, we've all got lives. And I just thought this would just show you how to tackle something big, badly. Notice I said badly for any of you got it in the other way. So I'm just coming off the tip of the tool and just locking up everything. We're nowhere near round yet. But I'm just trying to knock down the edges. And I can try coming in this way. As we get rounder, we'll get better. We'll be able to turn the speed up a little bit as it balances. Tools back towards me. And it's just bashing. What I'm supposed to be doing is turning the ghost. But at this speed, the ghost very difficult to see so I'm lifting the angle in trying to take out as big a chips as I can really to speed the process up I stopped with the spindle roughing gouge because that weren't the tool for the job I needed something strong and heavy spindle roughing gouge can come into play when we get it a bit rounder Just trying to dig that out a bit. I have to keep stopping the lathe to move the tool rest along or in, however I can get it. So my tool rest now, I can move down to here. Now, with a bit of luck, I should be over the worst of trying to get the tool rest to the wood. I think it was just that much wider at this end. So we've got that. So far, so good. Oh yeah. So we turn this on again. All the time I'm looking and listening as well in case something starts going adrift because a face shield is not gonna save me with a piece of wood this size. Just raising the handle up to scrape away and that's really, I'm not really cutting at the moment, I'm scraping away bits of wood just pull off there. too big a cut so it's trying to slow the lathe down stop the lathe again move to rest now Quite a lot, I would move the tool rest with the work spinning, but not with something like this, because I've got corners all over the place. It's big and heavy. I've got to sort of weigh up what is a safe move and a stupid move. I'm quite good at stupid moves, but I'm trying to do safe moves, because I do not want this piece of wood hurtling at me. I'm going to get hurt. Still sharp. Now, what I didn't say earlier, I think this is the wrong wood for the job. Um, tree was cut down. Hold on. My understanding is the tree was cut down uh, a year or so ago, and 
the guy wants a table made out of his tree. Well, this oak is going to move all over the place. At this diameter, if I do that there, on the dry face, we're getting 16, 15, 16. But what will happen is as we get into the wood, this will go up. So that's 18 there. And once we get to round, my guess is we're going to be over 30. So this is going to move and split. But evidently, the guy that's having the table done says he don't mind. So we'll see. But I'm doing this on a, I've told you, I'll turn it. That's it. The rest of it is down to you. a little bit so I don't take such a big cut when I can get the tool rest closer to the wood then I can use the wing of the tool to start wrapping down and that will speed the process up along a bit further now the other thing production turners have got they'll have a long tool rest and we haven't got a long tool rest no, don't go mad We're just seeing if I can get a little bit more speed into it Trying this long tool rest here, just trying to knock down them corners. was trying to slip there the belts were slipping because I was taking trying to take too big a cut the fine line trying to get the wood removed
Keep one and touch the wood to stop it. Stupid boy. Stupid, 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 stupid boy. Right. So, where are we at? Well, I think we can get our tool rest a bit closer now. So that'll be good. Closer we can get the tool rest, the better. Not that close. Just a tad off of there. Try that. Now what's catching? That bit just there. As I can't really afford for it to start banging and clattering around as we're getting it around. Try to level this out a bit when I'm bouncing along here I'm getting bumps in the surface Come along as I feel it bouncing and trying to skip on me. I drop my handle a little bit to take less a cut. again
as we're coming into round, you hear more cutting of the wood because we are in contact, the cutter's in contact with the wood more. We get fresh air there, fresh air there, and we're getting round of here. So this sort of project takes a while. Now what I'm going to do is bring the tool rest down so I'm over the centre post and concentrate on this end and then slowly move it along. See if I can speed it up. The trouble is I can't put any speed into the lathe. We're running at uh, 135 revs. I'm using more of the wing of the tool now as I'm getting to round. this in a little way got that off there right and now we tackle this bit and join it up there'll be a few shavings to clear up there once we're done moved on me and a fraction but it moved so you stop it straight away was my angle of approach because I'm just trying to remove this wood this could be a long long turn I've got to do two of them I must be mad Trying to use the wing more now to give me bigger cutting edge so I can take more shavings, speed the process up. I'm doing this sort of stuff uh, it's not on camera so I've got my tunes on so I can listen to me tunes uh, and away I go I can just get into a 
zone with me tunes on and not worry about it. All right, let's come back. I remember to turn the camera over. I have a swig of coffee. Take the shavings out. I don't like oat coffee. Now, yeah. Chris, that was a great idea. I didn't think of that. Got Mike to do the other one. We could have had a race. He would have enjoyed that. And of course, he's got the XL, which is even bigger and sturdier. More designed for this sort of work, I think. But the 230, you know, so far so good. Don't like the little bit of movement in the extension bed, but um, it's not going to be life-threatening to the project. Right, is everybody happy? Before I remember to switch the camera back. Um, so this is going to be a bit of a project, this one. Now, that tool might be getting a bit dull. Let's find another tool. Rub. bringing a couple of backup half inch gouges. I'm using half inch gouges at the moment to do this. So back over. On we go. Onwards and upwards as they say. Tools in my side. I'm just following the tool rest along really at the moment. Just get rid of the high points.
like wood carving, isn't it? Let's carve some wood. Get the corners off of this bit. Come a bit closer to the old rest now. Closer you are, the better. All right, we're over the tall post for the high point, so we're coming to here. Yes. Bit of butchery. It's quite a nice shape, just like that. Should we leave it like that? That'll do me. Note to self, just say no. Right. Just trying to work straight over the centre of the tool rest at the moment where the tool post comes down. Give me maximum support. Just while I'm knocking down these high points. this end down and we should be able to go oh there's a bit of burr here get that down there make sure she's going to turn and on 
check that too well, did I? What's bashing? Just that bit there. That will go in the past. Down low, so we can sort that one out. Just following the horizon as I come round here. over this bit here. using the wing of the tool more now.
This gives me a larger cutting area. Tool rest in a bit closer. Closer, closer. There we go. And we will just come along here. The reason I go backwards and forwards is to use as much of the edge as possible so I don't have to keep running the sharpener but we're heading for the sharpener. About now. So I've got two uh, half inch bowl gouges in work in order. Uh, with a long grind on Got half inch stand grind that I could use But the long grind gives me the wing so I can use the wing to start removing the wood and it removes a bit quicker so If I pop this one What's that right? Let's try this one. This is a standard grind don't give me so much cutting wing They're much better run if you don't take too heavy a cut.
really is time to sharpen these tools. Sharpen they are, the better it is. Let's get rid of that one somewhere. So, I've got two half inch bowl gouges here. So let's whip over to the old Pro Edge. There we go. So, I've got the table on here at the moment. I don't want that, so I'll get rid of my table. Uh, find my long grind jig onto there. Find me fingernail profiler or profiling jig. I go on to about 40, which I think gives me a 50 degree level or something. I think it's 5%. Don't do with trigonometry, but hey, I hope, hope you can hear me waffling on. So just a roll over one way, spin, roll back the other. There's one. That's bouncing because I took the uh, safety guard off earlier. I was just um, putting a coarser belt on just to reshape the tool slightly. Over one way, over the other. put that cover back on so there two little wing nuts I don't know how much of this you can see because I can't see a screen hopefully you can see it got the camera over it so let's see let's put that back on there where it should be right Okay, two freshly sharpened half inch bowl gouges. Turn the camera back. Woo! He's remembered to turn the camera and everything. What is going on? God, we're nearly round at one end. See how much better that cuts? the cutting edge into the wood a little bit. Skipped it there.
back there. percent of it look at that right let's move it down join that bit up with that make sure she's gonna turn all right turn her on wonder if we can get a tad more speed than 135 170 now we're cooking Off the side wing still. watching the horizon here just to bring it down to about the same diameter don't forget we're still roughing down
gear shifting. Right, so let's get this bit a bit rounder. got the cat ready to get covered in shavings I saw a little comment there about the cat Just going with my left hand on the handle. in a while nearly two hours so I'm going to stop for a break in a minute go and get a cuppa I drank me cuppa a while ago I'd just like to get this into round and then we'll start on the marking out and all that sort of stuff
a bit cranky, doesn't it? Uh, a bit of loose grain. way to go for round yet. Right. This up here. Turn this on. We're up to the dizzy heights of 2.30.
creaking. It's creaking. Well, we got a way to go still. Let's bring this along. I'll have a couple more cuts at this end. Now, this wood's quite wet now. We're only down about an inch or so. Oh, turn it on. So we're up now to 26. We were at 15, 16 on the outside. This middle is soaking, which is better for me because it will cut quicker and smoother. Not so good for the finished project. creaking round at last oh no not quite nearly round you can see this is soaking now um so
just trying to use every bit of the tool there. under the pressure round yeah look at that that's stunning isn't it unfortunately that bit's going to be wasted <laughs> soaking wet all right so two rest along and away we go again so there's still 104 of you watching this yeah it's got to be barking hold on on the old intro you can see it's going to be a long project. That's why I said it will be on and off during the day. Uh, I'll leave it on. Um, getting it to round so far has taken us nearly two hours. All right, it was about 40 minutes to mess around trying to get the bloody thing mounted on the lathe. But, um, you know, there's probably an hour and a half's turn in here. Just um, getting us to the point of that we're round, then we can mark it out and put our shape into it. So, do you think another half hour or so things will speed up? Uh, we'll have a round cylinder and then we'll move on from there. Right, so, is everybody happy that's still sticking with this? Have we got any questions? Yeah, no, no questions, everybody's happy. Right, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause. So I am going to go and get another cup of coffee. I've done two hours here and it's time for a break. So I'm going to stop for a coffee. I'll leave the stream live. Uh, I will be back. And we'll move on to carry on getting this round. Uh, and then we'll mark out the picture. Because don't forget, we're trying to do one of these here. One of these legs over here. I'm pointing at the screen, I don't know what you can see, but one of them sort of legs, which is, the spec is nine inches, 500 long, and I've got to put two 38mm uh, spigots on the end, so when he drills into the base and the top, he's got spigots. So the bottom bead, we call this a bead over here, this bottom bead, uh, as got to have a nice square shoulder so it will sit into his socket so, and this log is about 700 long so 500 and you'll get I've lost sort of 50 mil wire either end with the screws so you get a two inch spigot to play with if he's lucky if it all works to plan um, this is going into the cellar, evidently, a wine cellar. 
that's uh, heat controlled or helium fight you humidified. I don't know what it's going to do to this oak. I should think it will split all over the place. Hey, yo. It was warmed. Right, so the tools are blunt. So, as a tip, I'll show you something here. As a tip, let's go over to the pro edge. I hope you can hear me over the pro edge. Maybe I'll get walk around my. So, I'm using a diamond belt, which is 180 grit. And the edge is dying quite quickly. So what I'm gonna do, take this 180 grit belt out. Should have left the cover off, shouldn't I? Should have left the cover off. Take the 180 grit belt out. And you could go in with a 120 grit belt. See if I could find a 120 grit belt. Can't see what I've done with them. Um, I've got a 60 grit here, let's stick a 60 on. So I'm going to go with a 60, it's not a finishing cut, this is a roughing cut. It will make the cutting edge um, coarser. And the coarser cutting edge should last longer. So we don't have to keep sharpening the tools. We're not trying to get finishing cuts at the moment, don't forget. We're just trying to rough down. So the longer we can keep the cutting edge, the less time we have to come back to the sharp now, all that sort of stuff. Got that in there. One wipe in either direction. So this now will give us a much coarser edge. You can almost see it. Um, I don't know what you can see on there, but now in theory, the coarser edge won't go dull so quick. I moved that, I did. Let's just turn that on, put my old glasses back on. Let's see what happens now. Today I was going to stop, when not I? <laughs> I 
just when you get getting round before I stop really. Red stop, red stop. Still, we're not parallel yet. Okay, let's get that bit done. Let's get with it. Oh. You were still looking at the proage. Nice picture of a furry. I put an extra monitor up so I can see what you're seeing. Keep getting a look at it. Very kind of you. It's going to be a long day.
just looking at the horizon here, trying to just level it out a bit. down a ways yet. on here. myself off the car. rest there. There we go. Right, we're round. We are round.
Now whip along here, whip, he says whip. Not gonna whip at all, are you? Just gonna go at the speed that the lane's going. Just slowly. Last bit. And we're round. Then we've got to start mapping out. Greens go, red stop, as they say. Right, there we have part one. Oh. Ruby, I just saw your comment. The spindle roughy gouge is what we'd use, I'd use now. Now I've got it to round. When it was a big log and bouncing around all over the place, um, it wasn't good. It needed something solid. So I went, opted for my big heavy bowl gouge. Um, but I will use the spindle roughing gouge on part two when I bring it level, start putting the dimensions in, marking out, um, and then we'll use spindle turning tools probably. I have got a mountain of shavings down here, absolute mountain. If I come down to camera three, and you see them, this is how deep they are, I'll cover me boot, I mean it ridiculous um, uh, hey ho now we're into round you can't see a keyboard over here it's covered everything is absolutely covered just empty my keyboard off oh what's happened there can you still see me It's something on the keyboard and it all disappeared. I don't know if the uh, ATEM disappeared or what. Just clearing the shavings off. So, I'm going to stop for a uh, quick sandwich or something and a coffee. Um, the tannins on this oak is already starting to discolour the lathe bed. 
so that will need a clean. I should give it a protective coat of wax. Um, what I'm going to do is end of the string and then I will turn. Now the cat disappeared. In. I'll turn the uh, live stream feed back on uh, this afternoon. So anybody that wants to pop by and have a look at what's going on and where it's coming to, um, then you'll be able to pop in and out and have a look. It's going to take longer. I knew it was going to take a while. Uh, it's taken longer to get it to this point than I anticipated, but I think that was the messing around trying to get it loaded. I should have left it loaded from last night. But anybody that was at the beginning could see the problems you have loading big bits of wood onto laves and all the rest of it. It's far easier if you've got enough space, bring the engine hoist in, hoist it into place, or you've got two of you. Uh, but there's only one of us, me. So, I hope you've enjoyed this morning. It's been just a as you get there sort of morning and we've got to here we've got our cylinder uh ready to go for leg one leg two is more awkward because it's got a match leg one but hey who knows you might get a pair of legs that look like each other that'd be good wouldn't it right so thank you all for stopping by this morning i hope you've enjoyed it or <laughs> if you've been asleep wake up now i'm off you can wake up um i'll turn on uh, a live stream a bit later on so anybody wants to stop by can watch it i'm repeating myself um and you know at the end of the day there will be a pair of legs well maybe not at the end of today might take in tomorrow for me but uh, if i get one done so you can see what it looks like that's good. Uh, we've had bouncing laves. We've had all sorts going on. Um, but we got to round. So that's cool. It's a lovely looking piece of wood with his big knot here. Uh, and these little bits of burr coming up through here. You know, it's lovely. Um, and the trouble is, it's going to... We've got a big split in here already. That's going to go. We've got to go down about... Six mil, I think we want uh, about nine inches. So, yeah, we got got to go. We're probably about there. That's the diameter somewhere near it there. We're a bit wider here. Um, so we've got to go down about six mil to bring it level. And then we'll mark the centre, mark outwards, draw up a plan, make notes of the plan on the piece of paper next to me. Um, so I can replicate it. <sighs> right. Thank you, everybody, for stopping by. Just, just, uh, I mounted a lift by my lathe for getting pieces like that mounted. Ruby, I've got a uh, hoist. I've got a hoist. Uh, engine hoist, we call them. Um, but. Getting the engine hoist into this studio area would have been a bit tight. Um, if I'd put it on my VB, there's plenty of room. I would have just hoisted it in. Uh, but that's what I would do. Engine hoist, get the wood in, and you can level it up, swing it about, get it exactly where you want. Uh, could it warp? It might might move i don't think it will it's a big solid piece of wood um and i'm not too worried about that really because when it's finished it's going to move and warp anyway and split and do all sorts of stuff you know i don't know I, my opinion was not a touch of job um but uh, this is going on a table made out of the same wood so there's a bait frame been made and a top and um, once these two legs, as I say, it's supposed to be going into a wine cellar um, that's humidity controlled and for the wine and everything. And who knows what's going to happen to it? 
you know, we've already got a big crack here. We're going to lose two inches, so depending on how deep that crack, it might crack might be in the spigot. There's not a lot I can do about that, you know. But I did say I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Anyway, so enough of me waffling on. Hope you've enjoyed uh, part one of doing a table leg. I'll put the cameras back on later. I'm going to end the stream now. Thank you all for stopping by. Thank you very much for the uh, kind donations. That's very good of you. Um, and I shall be back a bit later with part two. Uh, and if you feel like stopping by at any time throughout the day to see what's going on, I'll have the cameras running for you so you can see the progress. So, but now it's time for a coffee and a sandwich. I'll speak to you all soon. Uh, next week we'll do a normal demo. Um, thanks for stopping by. Hope you've enjoyed it. Good luck. And I might see some of you later. And if not, have a good week and enjoy yourselves. Links for a little coffee table. Yeah, it's uh, the, the table top is around about 18 inches by 18 inches. <laughs> no. I showed you the table, if you've not seen it, it's going to look something like that, so I understand. I don't know. Once legs similar to that, up to me. Got a dimension. But I don't know. Something like that, I suppose. Um, thank you all for stopping by. Cheers. Have a good week. If I don't see you later, um, and stay safe and enjoy your weeks. Cheerio, thank you, goodbye.